Hey guys, welcome to Power to the Flower. I'm inside today because it's freezing outside, 31 degrees. For those of you outside of zone nine, I know you're cackling right now. But um, that's okay because this video was filmed earlier in the week and it is gonna be so great. Today starts our multi-part series on care of your backyard fruit tree with my special guest, my father-in-law, Ted DeYoung, the retired pomologist from UC Davis. So we are going to be doing multiple videos about the care and pruning of different trees, old, young, established, newly planted. We have all sorts of trees to share with you on how to get your best production. Let's talk about pests. Let's talk about watering. Tons of things to talk about. Let's talk about pruning. Let's talk about fertilizing. Lots of things to talk about. In today's video, we're going to be going over general fruit tree care with Ted. And if you want to get into the weeds a little bit more and understand more about fruit trees from Ted, he just published a brand new book. You can order it on Amazon. I have it linked in the description of this video. It's called Concepts for Understanding Fruit Trees. So I think it's going to be really helpful. So let's just get right into the video today on how to care for our backyard fruit tree. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Power to the Flower. I'm Kara, and we are here in a friend's Zone 9 backyard with her fruit trees and the scientist. My father-in-law, Ted DeYoung, is here with us. So let me first introduce you to Ted DeYoung, my pomologist father-in-law. Ted, hello. Welcome to Power to the Flower. Hi, Kara. We have this microphone situation that we have to share one mic, so sorry about that. But I thought it would be nice for everyone to know how Ted became a pomologist in the first place? How did you decide that this was an area of interest for you? Well, I've always had an interest in fruit trees, uh, but when I, um, I was fortunate when I finished my degree to get a job in the pomology department at UC Davis, and I've uh, spent the last 40 years doing pomology, learning about trees, how to manage them, how they grow, uh, what they're doing and so that's how I got into it. And we are so lucky to have him here today with us, yay! So in this video today, what I wanna do is talk about for the average backyard gardener, what happens when you move into your house and you have some established trees. We are going to deal with typical problems gardeners run into with watering, pests, and pruning and answer a lot of questions such as, why is my tree leaking sap? Why are the tree trunks sometimes painted white on fruit trees? How much should I water my tree? And how should I stake my tree properly? When should I prune my tree? And then answer the question, why do we do all of these things? Okay, so first of all, uh, these are uh, Japanese plums, at least this large one is, and this one here behind me, uh, two different Japanese plums. And this is quite typical of what you have in people's yards. They haven't paid a whole lot of attention to them. They, they're, they're pretty decent shape. However, they haven't been pruned uh, for a few years, I'm sure. So we have our backyard fruit tree, and now we've noticed it's leaking sap. What is this about? This one here has some gumming and so on on the trunk, and homeowners were questioning the gumming. Either some sort of heat damage or uh, some diseases, but typically for plum, it's not a huge problem. Uh, if you have apricot and cherry and they look like that, then within three or four years, the tree's gonna die. But this tree is probably not. I would recommend definitely painting the trunk of this because this one, this tree particularly has a lot of cracked bark and on the other side here, disease is even worse. And I think that's probably caused by uh, heat stress and sunburn. So a little bit of lack of water in the summertime and direct access to the sun is beating down on this trunk. And for this, it's very simple. We recommend uh, taking white lake, uh, cheap white lake tex paint, mixing it 50-50 in water and painting the trunk. That, that will help this a lot. So you can see this was already painted like up to here. Is this, where would you want to paint it up to? Paint, paint it up to here. You, you want the main part that's exposed directly to the sun painted so that the, the white paint will reflect the, the sunlight and decrease the heat on the trunk. So would you paint this one white as well? I'd paint all your, all your trunks, especially those that are exposed directly 
to uh, sunlight. It's yeah, it's coming in directly over that hill and right into here. And in a, you know, it's okay today, it's a nice cool day, but in, in summer when it's 90 degrees out here, this trunk's gonna, the, t the temperature of this trunk will get up way over 100. Okay, so we have a good idea of how to prepare our fruit trees for sunburn. Now, what about watering? He mentioned that the problems in the trunk were from underwatering and sunburn. Let's talk about the watering. Any thoughts on watering amounts? If you're an orchardist or a grower, they calculate the amount of water that they apply uh, and all of that. Uh, for, for a home gardener, it's much more difficult. I would just suggest that you, you water or you have uh, sprinklers or drip or micro sprinkler on them and you water for a few hours uh, at least once or twice a week. One thing though I real recommend definitely is with all fruit trees, many people think, okay, I'll water around the trunk and they have the, the, the soil, it tends to be quite often people like to have the soil a little bit sunken around the trunk. They think, okay, I'll just lay my hose there and run the water against the right there and it'll basin around the tree and the tree will get more water. That's really a bad thing. You always want to have the soil line around your tree higher than the other soil. You don't want water to be soaking toward the tree. This is an example of what not to do. Yeah. Because there's like, a, it goes down. Yeah, so any water, if you lay a hose here, water is going to come right up against the tree and that can cause uh, diseases on the trunk. So that's, it's much better to have it slightly raised, the soil slightly raised, and have the water uh, be running away. You don't want it to run far away, but not directly in the trunk. Not towards not the trunk. Not toward the trunk. Mm, okay, and cool. certainly um, citrus and, and many trees are like that. You don't, you, you, people make that mistake. Speaking of trunks, uh, so, what about this one? This one, the grower left it tied up. He probably staked it. He probably staked it, or they probably had to stake it here to hold it up initially when it was young. And they had this nylon twine around here, and it's tied too tight. And they never took it off. And so that tree, that tree is partially girdled. The trunk grew around the the nylon rope, and so. Uh, it, it will probably continue to live and, and it actually, the bark will, will go over the top and eventually, if it stays that long, but it's, but it's gonna, that effect is going to be there for a long time and it tends to decrease the vigor of the tree. As you can see, that tree is much smaller. I, I'm, I'm guessing that tree is maybe the same age as this one actually. Uh, they tell us that that one's a pluot this one's a Japanese plum. So that's a very important tip. Stakes and ties, sometimes trees come in like wire baskets. All that stuff should be taken off. And in fact, what we then learn later is that for young trees, we need to even take out the stake that it usually comes in tied directly to the trunk because the more the tree works in the against the wind and against the elements the stronger the tree becomes i don't know if you watch garden answer but if you love youtube videos about gardening you should definitely be subscribing to her she had a huge i think it was a blue spruce like a gigantic evergreen topple over in the wind and found that the root ball still had the wire basket that it was planted in like decades before. It can be real problematic. So let's just take a quick minute to leave our established plum trees behind and go up the hill where there are some newly planted saplings. And let's take some time to talk about how important this concept of properly staking really is so that we can establish our trees and get them nice and strong. Do you have any comments about taking this off because we have this post here? At this stage, I would take all these ties off, take the stake out, you can leave this one back, you can leave this one in here for one more year, but after that I'd remove this as all. well. It's very important that this tree lives to, uh, learns to live on its own. If you, leave, if you leave this support in here too long, 
then the tree will rely on this stake to hold it up. And the sooner that you make it live on its own, see the swaying of the tree in the wind, that's uh, makes the cambium develop out. So that this tree, the trees grow in both directions. They grow shoots that are growing up, but they grow wood in diameter. That's obvious because that has a bigger trunk than this, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but the more this tree sways, the more it's stimulated to grow the thicker trunk or a trunk that's stronger. So if you don't let it, if you don't let it feel the forces of nature and the wind blowing, it will be weak. And then once you take this off, the tree's just gonna or have a bigger chance of doing that. So that's why we recommend doing this rather than this. So when you come home from the nursery and you have this guy, take it out immediately and instead uh, put something uh, if, else in. If you have this, I would take it out immediately, yes. There's no damage yet, but that, you want this tree to be moving around a little bit like that on a windy day. Does it also help stimulate the root system? Yes, it, it helps stimulating the, the diameter growth in the, in the root as well and the, and the outward growing. Okay, the next question in my mind is, when is the best time to prune? Is there a wrong time to prune? Traditionally, most of, these, most of the time they've been pruned in the winter time. Any time from uh, October, November, December into up till bloom. Now, and that's because, that's because the dormant pruning, you're basically cutting off older wood and you're setting the tree back up to grow vigorously in the spring. Now you can prune these trees any time of the year. Well that's great to know. We can prune our fruit trees any time of the year. What a relief. If I don't get to it in the winter it's totally fine. But Ted's going to explain to us right now why growers typically prune their trees in the dormant period when there's no leaves between the fall and the winter before the bloom comes on because it actually makes a lot of sense. If you think about the trees, the leaves on a tree are basically uh, miniature factories. So the tree is in the springtime is growing new leaves and building new factories. So if you prune in May, after those new factories have been built, they, and you come and cut a whole bunch of canopy out, then you're removing the factory before it, can, before it returns on the investment of making the tree. You're basically decreasing the vigor of the tree that way. But it's probably not going to hurt the tree at all to prune. You can prune even in the middle of the summer as uh, I wouldn't recommend if it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit because then you can scorch some things, but, but generally, it's not gonna hurt tremendously. Just like Ted said about the scorching with the leaves, there might be other factors to think about when pruning your tree. What I learned with my citrus tree, I have a video posted on that, is that if you prune inside of March through November, there's tons of citrus leaf miner around in California, and they'll go after the fresh leaves that grow after you prune. So it's better to prune in the winter time because of the pests. But we know the tree can handle the pruning any time of the year. It's not like too much for the tree. And I think that's the part that's really great to understand. But typically we do it in the winter time because the leaves are off the tree and it's, and it's easier to see what you're doing. And when the tree goes to sleep or goes dormant in the fall, it sort of has stored enough carbohydrates and nutrients in a trunk and bark and the roots and so forth for it to come back out in the spring. Now if we do a lot of pruning up here during the dormant period, the tree had stored enough materials to restart all that stuff. And it restarts it at buds. So if we prune in the in the dormant season and we cut we cut a lot of shoots off, every time you cut a shoot off, you're cutting off potential growing points. So, so uh, you're tipping the balance, the, the carbohydrate 
balance of the tree toward growth by pruning during the dormant season because the tree would have normally woken up with all those growing points there. You've just removed a whole bunch of growing points. So, but the main part of the carbohydrates are still there. So what I've learned from Ted is a lot when it comes to this whole question of, is there a wrong time to prune? And what I understand is there isn't. So we can prune at any time, but if we wanna use the most efficient, natural way of the tree, then we do it during the dormant season because it sounds like the tree is like holding on to all of this energy and ready to burst forth with its old canopy size, but we've pruned it down. So now it's gonna grow, 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 grow. And this is really efficient for the tree. So that's cool. But if I'm honest, it's way easier for me to prune a tree when the blooms are on or the leaves, because then I can see which branches are dead and which branches aren't. I can also have a better idea of how much light is getting into the tree. And as you'll see in our next video, when we prune these old plum trees, those are important aspects of pruning. We're also going to have a video on pruning and two old, weird, twisty looking, growing the wrong direction, only with some um, branches on one side, multi spliced in with different types of apples, apple trees, and an apricot, as well as a young plum in this multi-part series. So don't forget, you can buy Ted's book linked in the description below. So please join us back here for our next video. If you haven't subscribed, do. You can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook during the week. See you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.